I'm going to just interrupt this peaceful morning montage to say, if you haven't treated yourself to a disco ball for the lighting effects yet, you really, you really got to do that for yourself. <laughs> position these swooshes into place and we're in business. I'm sorry if you can hear a lot of squeaking as I'm moving around here. That is the stool that I sit on at my dressing table here and I think it's literally like made of cereal boxes. <laughs> I've had it for years and it's like the worst quality piece of furniture I've ever purchased in my life but I just haven't got around to replacing it yet. I really need to get a new little stool and I was thinking actually I might get one of those ones where you can like lift the top up and put stuff in it um, because that would be really handy for the insane drawer of hair tools that I have next to me. I'm like wasting a whole drawer just filled with hair tools that I very rarely use so it'd be nice if I could place them within a little ottoman stool. That's actually a really good idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna buy one of those today. You heard it here first. So that's probably enough seat chat. Uh, how's it going? Hope you're having a really lovely day. It is absolutely glorious here today in sunny, chilly, autumnally London. Um, it's the absolute best weather. This is what makes my soul sing and soar and swoosh above the sky. Um, it's really, it's good for the soul, isn't it? Weather like this where you can bundle up and I must go for a walk today. This is a mental reminder to myself. Lucy, you must leave the house today. So I have just, hang on, let me just finish this mouthful of extremely cold coffee. I've just finished putting myself together for the day. I have put a bit of makeup on. I wanted to ask actually, while I'm sitting here, I don't think you'll be able to see it now because I've just put some very, although it's a very light foundation actually, so it probably still shows through to be honest. At least for the past couple of years now, if not for longer, to be honest, I think I just always put it down to having sensitive skin. Um, I never really thought too much about it and just always thought like, oh, good old red face, she's back in town. But I was starting to suspect that it might be a little bit of kind of like mild rosacea. And about six months ago, I went for a facial and the facialist said to me, oh yeah, you've got a little bit of mild rosacea just along the front here. Just kind of like on the, on the little apples of my, my cheeks here. <laughs> it's not something that I'm gonna start getting hung up on, but it is something that I would like to try and nip in the bud if possible. So if anybody, I know that a lot of you guys, the reason I'm saying this, I know a lot of you guys are very into skincare. So if anybody has any particular recommendations or experience with any products that have really helped to combat, to nip in the bud, a little bit of rosacea along the cheeks here, um, I would love to hear those recommendations from you because it feels like something I should probably do something about. The bad news is I know, I think I know anyway, that rosacea is linked to basically all of the good things in life. I think it's linked to like carbs and sugar and alcohol and caffeine and central heating. Basically all of the things that make life worth living. In other words, it's definitely just caused by all of my bad habits. My bad habits lead to rosacea. <laughs> so in all honesty, it feels like something I'm probably just gonna have to live with because that's not something I want to sort out. I don't want to remove any of those things from my life. <laughs> so if that's the price I must pay, okay, Sarah, Sarah. But if there's any products that would like to solve that problem for me so I can continue all, the, all of those aspects of my lifestyle, <laughs> I'd love to hear about them, please. It's actually been a very nice kind of slow start in this house today. Adam has got off to the office today, hence why you're keeping me company. But I'm really annoyed with myself and I always get really annoyed with myself when I do this. I picked up my phone while I was still in bed, which is a habit that I'm really trying to crack. I'm really trying to not look at my phone until I'm like fully started in the day. I hate like Instagram being the first thing I look at in the day. Like I'm really trying to stop that. But this morning I fully failed and I ended up scrolling on my phone for so long in bed this morning because I fell into this rabbit hole on Reddit of photos of abandoned theme parks around the world. Tell me why that's how I decided to start my day today. It's actually very interesting though. There's something very eerie and very creepy about that. And also, I feel like I'm rambling a lot here, um, but I've got a lot to say to you today. The One of the photos was of a place called Camelot, which was a theme park that used to be in the north of England, I think. Uh, I can't really remember where it was, to be honest, but I, we, used, we used to go when I was little. 
Um, very, very much the Disney world of the UK 90s, some would say. Some would not say that. Uh, but there was live jousting. What a time to be alive! What could possibly go wrong with live jousting? I had no idea that it had closed down, to be honest. I haven't thought about Camelot for a really long time, but I had no idea it had closed down. And there it was, in this article on BuzzFeed and Reddit about abandoned theme parks. So, Camelot, gone but not forgotten. Gulliver's World, is that still there? Um, who's been to Gulliver's World? <laughs> How have we got here? So yeah, I don't really know why I found that so interesting, but it was really captivating looking at these photos of like urban exploration, abandoned roller coasters and water slides and um, yeah. <laughs> I really do need to leave the house today. Well, why do I keep drinking this? It's literally stone cold. Blech. Now that I am out of my dressing gown like a presentable human being, here's a little outfit of the day. Seeing as it's so cold today, I've decided that a t-shirt on its own won't do. So I popped on this amazing patterned knit. This is from, this was gifted actually, it's from Mango via Next. Um, I love the little mixture of colours with like the pink and the mustard and the green. So cute! Uh, one of my trusty ASOS white t-shirts always and these are my new look jeans they've got this little star embroidery on them and they are so freaking cute i absolutely love these jeans what is this ball of cat what is this hairball oh hi sorry to interrupt your snoring i've never heard a cat snore so loud as this one is today <laughs> well don't you get up you just stay there <laughs> one part of this morning which i forgot to mention is that i had to start my day today with Arguably, I'm I'm gonna put it up there and say it is the single worst part of being a grown-up. There are many, many things that suck about being an adult, <laughs> but I honestly think this might be the worst one. And I had to do it this morning and I was reminded of how awful it was. Unclogging the like the bath drain. Literally like I'm gonna need three to five working days to recover from having to do that this morning. But it was all worth it though, because my shower then made up for it. Tis the season to yognog. If you are yet to introduce this shower gel into your life, I beg you on my knees, you must try this shower gel. They do tiny little bottles. We went all out and invested in the big one for this Christmas. It is the perfect spicy, sugary, maple syrupy, vanilla-y, tonka beany, magic this stuff this stuff is magic and it's a christmas special so it only comes around once a year you can't get it all the time so it feels so good to be reunited i had a comment once on a vlog <laughs> and it stuck with me forever these comments they really stick with me i tell you uh from someone who said <laughs> that every time i did a home vlog they kept a tally of how many coffees i got through in a video because they made a note of how many mugs i used through one video and that shame that shame weighs heavy on my mind. So to trick you and to stop those japes, I'm gonna use the same mug and then you'll never know. So it is looking slightly insane in here, not gonna lie. There's a lot going on in this room. I think maybe we need to, uh, maybe we need to streamline what's going on here. Now that we've added Christmas decorations into the mix too, it's a lot. Uh, not even to mention the, the tinsel wearing leopard who's hanging out behind this chair over here. If this was your extremely jam packed slightly chaotic living room um this one right here where would you put a christmas tree <laughs> riddle me this where where are we going to insert a christmas tree into this scenario i think what we're gonna have to do is remove the bean bag and the armchair pop them up into the bedroom and it's just gonna have to be plonked like in the middle of this this little cavern down here. I was hoping that the kitchen might be done before Christmas and therefore we would no longer have the iconic living room fridge to contend with. Um, but alas, I haven't got my act together so that's gonna be the new year now. That would have been a perfect Christmas tree corner. Maybe next year. So let me tell you, I am as surprised as you are that this has happened, but I am actually getting vaguely organized when it comes to Christmas presents this year. We're still, what, five weeks away? Four weeks away? Three weeks away. But I've already made a really good start on my Christmas shopping. I don't know whether it's because last Christmas was so, such a cacophony of craziness and chaos um, and everything was so up in the air. 
I wanted to just be like a little bit on top of things this year and I didn't want my usual mad scrum of going out shopping on Christmas Eve. I was determined to get organized and it's actually working. So one of my go-to websites when it comes to Prezi inspiration, gift buying is always Fi. Our entire house is covered in things from Fi. It's where we got our living room rug from. It's where we got the cushions on our bed from. Our espresso mugs are from there. I love that it's, it's basically a huge showcase of small shops and independent designers all put in one place together. So I always find that it's a great website to head to when I'm on the hunt for something a little bit special and unique, or if you've got a particular person in mind and you wanna find just the right thing for them. It's particularly great for holiday shopping, Christmas shopping this year because they've got an amazing showcase of gift guides on there, which have been especially curated for all the different types of people in your life. I have very kindly sponsored this video, which I am absolutely thrilled about. And I'm very excited to show you a few of my favorite little bits and bobs that I have picked up on there so far in terms of Christmas presents. I found some absolute beauts. This in particular was in the craft gifts gift guide, which I obviously headed straight to. And it is this gorgeous little kit from a company called Chasing Threads and it is Stitch Your Star Sign. Um, so it's on this little envelope pouch. This may have been a gift for myself. It comes in this gorgeous little gift box, all the instructions you could need, and then you get this beautiful pouch which has this lovely night sky pattern all over it. And then you stitch your star sign constellation onto it. You get the little guide for how to stitch your star sign. And I just thought this was gorgeous. I'm kind of obsessed with it. If I found this under the tree, which I will because I bought it for myself. <laughs> I would be absolutely delighted and thrilled by that. I think that is such a gorgeous idea. I think gifting craft kits is really nice because you're gifting someone like that little bit of time to sit and do a little mindful activity for themselves. This I have definitely got someone in mind for. I think this is a really great present for them. Hopefully they're not watching this, but I don't think he cares about my videos. So I think we're fine. This I found in the sustainable gift guide on Fi, which I thought was a really handy little guide to put together. And I thought this was a great Prezi because I think a lot of people in January um, set themselves like the resolution of taking lunch into work whenever they can. Um, so this is like a little lunch box, but rather than being a box, it's it's almost like a bowl. It's from a brand called w &P. This is the Porter Bowl. Um, and not only is it a great idea to have like a little lunch bowl basically, um, but it also looks really cute too. I think it's really, really nice. It's got like a seal tight lid. It's made of glass, so it's lovely quality. Um, and I just thought that was a really nifty little gift. Some really gorgeous home bits that I found over on Fire. So one of my favorite things to gift people for Christmas is a blanket. I gifted a couple of blankets last year actually from different places. It's this really beautiful sage green color and it's got this lovely kind of pale check pattern to it with some little tasseling details on the edges. It is so warm and the most gorgeous quality. It's from a brand called Kodu and it is 100% New Zealand wool. So it is super warm. That whole brand had some really lovely blankets and it took me a while to decide which one was the one. <laughs> Something a little bit special for either the bookworm in your life or someone who just appreciates some nice homeware. This would be like a really, really special gift. Um, I think bookends are a really nice present anyway, but these in particular, as soon as I saw them, I was like, wowie. Really special, really unique gift. They're these incredible crystal bookends. Like the statement color of these is just so gorgeous. I love these, they're so weighty. The quality is beautiful and they're just, I mean, look at that. It looks like a piece of the galaxy. On the outside, they're this like gorgeous textured golden dragon egg vibe, uh, which I'm totally here for. The more dragon eggs, the merrier, if you ask me. They come in quite a spectacular pair. I'm just completely obsessed with these. If you found these under the tree, I feel like you'd be utterly buzzing and maybe convinced that someone had gifted you something magical. <laughs> Sticking to the homeware, although this, I think I found in a gift guide for plant lovers, a plant mister. If this isn't the cutest stocking filler I've ever seen, I don't know what is. These are such, they feel kind of like a little bit extra to me and a little bit special. I really feel like I know what I'm doing when I water my plants with a plant mister. In reality, I haven't got a clue and it's a miracle that anything in this house stays alive. And this is just a lovely little stocking filler. Not only is it practical and useful, but they also look extremely nice on the mantelpiece as well. I love this green one. It looks kind of a, uh, kind of like a little bit vintage. In reality, it's actually, oh, it's from Sass and Belle. Oh, I love Sass and Belle. This would actually be 
a really lovely secret Santa present as well. The last piece of homeware that I picked up from Fi, which I think would make a gorgeous gift, I wanted to make sure I included a vase because I think they're really underrated presents. This one that I found on Fi is an absolute mega boy. I love it. It's like an orb. It's so unusual and so pretty and I really like it. It's an optic glass bottle vase. I'll make sure to link all these prezzies in the description box down below. I just thought it was really unique and pretty. I love the kind of really like spherical shape of it. I actually use this to pop some of our dried flowers in. I'll demonstrate for you, shall I? And I just think these look so lovely in a clear glass round vase like this. I think that's really, really beautiful and kind of minimal, but statement at the same time. I'm a real big fan of this. I'm absolutely chuffed with it. I always think of Fi as being one of my go-to places for homeware, especially um, prints in particular, because I love that you can buy them with the frames. But they also sell a really great selection of like accessories, um, fashiony bits and bobs. And I spotted this headband, a little bit of a stocking fillery type prezi. I think everyone loves a statement hairband. And this is, this is a particular statement one. You might have seen me using this this morning. This makes me feel like Anne Boleyn. And uh, I mean, I hope I don't have the same fate, but I'll, I'll gladly have the same hairband style. It was the color of this that I mainly fell in love with. I think that gorgeous, like shiny burnt orange is uh, everything that dreams are made of really. But I love the fact it was handmade. I think that's really special. The quality of it is absolutely beautiful. So I hope those are a few little helpful gift ideas, which uh, might get you unstuck if you're finding someone particularly tricky to buy for this year. And the best news of all is that I've got a discount code for you. I'm gonna pop all the info about my discount code on screen right now and in the description box down below, um, along with all of the things that I've shown you today. So head over, get your Christmas shopping started. Make sure you get your orders in early, especially because they're linked to small businesses. Time for some lunch. I've just found these in the freezer. So these will do very nicely. I'm gonna steam up a few of these in the big pan. Um, they're really nice, these, and they're like the quickest, easiest lunch. Right, I've packed a quick little bag. You okay there, Flo? Having a very sleepy day. I don't really need much, to be honest. I was gonna take my full laptop, but seeing as I'm gonna actually walk to where I'm going, it's a bit of a walk and my laptop is so heavy. So I'm just gonna take my iPad instead. I recently um, invested in an iPad keyboard for when I go out and about working. And it's like an iPad case that also has a keyboard on it so I can sit and do my writing. Um, and it's so much lighter than my laptop, so I highly recommend that if you're on the move a lot. And I'm also gonna take this sweet little card which I bought from Papier. It's got a little bunch of flowers on it and it just has sending love and I'm gonna pop that in the post to my nan. Because a couple of weeks ago she had a fall and broke her hip, so that is fairly terrible. And obviously she is in hospital and extremely down in the dumps, so I'm gonna do what I can from the other end of the country, send her a little card and hopefully that Cheers are up slightly. You can't even send flowers to hospital right now, so my card will have to do. So I just need to grab keys and some water and a mask. And then I'm gonna go to a little local cafe and set up shop and do my work this afternoon. I think I'm gonna get myself a little chai latte. This is my like usual routine when I've got writing to do. I go to this cafe, I get myself a chai latte and a cinnamon bun. It is also linked to a bookshop, so the chances of me coming home with a new book Sky high. Right, I really need to get a move on and go. I forgot to mention this this morning. I have a lipstick which I'm completely obsessed with. Um, I saw it on TikTok. TikTok is starting to influence me so much, it's an actual problem, but I saw this on TikTok and it was sold out for so long. Um, it's a Clinique lipstick. Is that Clinique? Yeah, that's Clinique. Um, and it's called Black Honey. And the reason that I was so influenced to buy this lipstick is apparently it is the very lipstick that Liv Tyler wears in Lord of the Rings as Arwen. And I don't know why, but that is the lipstick sell that I've been waiting for for my entire life. I didn't know I wanted that lipstick. I didn't know I wanted Arwen's lipstick in the slightest. But as soon as I heard that, it was a done deal. So if you always wanted the absolute natural lip of dreams and also the same beauty routine as the daughter of Elrond, which I mean, why wouldn't you? This is the one. Let's go!
Wow, it literally looks as though it's about 10 o'clock at night. It's not that late. I can tell somebody wants some dinner though, so I'm gonna feed you, madame. Oh my God, I got sent on an absolute wild goose chase by Adam though. Um, he's got this new like noodle dish. One of the ingredients that I had to track down was oyster mushrooms. I literally don't think I've ever seen these before in my life. They look like a pair of bloomers. I had no idea what I was looking for, so it took me a while to track them down. <laughs> Blah! Flo, what is this trying to achieve? What are you trying to do? Please hold. How has this happened? Hey, how did this even happen? What are you doing? <laughs> This is our current dinner obsession. It's a yaki udon, but without the udon noodles because we prefer smaller noodles. So it's like a delicious pork noodle dish and it's absolutely out of this world. It's a new discovery that has literally taken over our entire lives. Um, I will make sure to leave the recipe for this down below. I look a little rough around the edges now. I'm about to go and take my makeup off, put my pajamas on, chill out for the evening. Very much looking forward to it because it's drag race final tonight so it's a big night in this house adam is team kitty's got claws i'm team ella bidet it's real battle of the giants i'll show you my pajamas as well actually because they're so cute i was gifted these recently by a brand called chelsea piers and they're so adorable a they feel amazing they're probably the softest pajamas i've ever had they've got this really cute little winter design all over them i absolutely love them and they're like a leggings style i mentioned earlier that i would probably come home with a book today after being out and about i went into waterstones looking for a particular book and they didn't have it i was fully ready to buy myself one today and they didn't have it but the book that i was on the hunt for was the second in this installment i don't know if you ever read it you'll have to let me know if you're a fan if you did like it if you didn't like it if it's on your list it's a court of thorns and roses by sarah j mass or maz i'm not sure how you say that to be honest and i finally finished this last night it took me a little while to get through it. This is gonna turn into an impromptu book chat now, isn't it, let's be honest. It took me a little while to get through this because I would say I didn't start enjoying it until maybe, how far in did I get? I would say it was literally like this far in. I think with fantasy you really have to, you have to almost psych yourself up to read it a little bit, I find anyway. You have to really kind of suspend all disbelief and really kind of bury yourself in that whole universe, don't you? And because I hadn't done that for such a long time, I think I struggled a little bit to kind of really let go and get get involved, you know what I mean? And I mentioned on Instagram that I wasn't sure about it, but I was persevering. And a lot of people said that they felt the same about this first one because this one kind of basically almost just kind of exists to set up the universe. And then so many people have told me that the second one is amazing and that's where it gets really good. I was convinced the whole way through, I was like, I'm not into this, I'm not gonna read the next one. I'm glad I tried it, but not for me. And then the last few chapters I was like, I'm in, here we go. <laughs> I went into three different charity shops on the way home because a part of me was like, mm, it's the kind of book that would probably be in a charity shop. So I went on the hunt, but alas, absolutely nothing. And I have now moved on to this one which is a bit of a cult classic it's the secret history by donna tart which i've never read i've heard of mixed reviews about i know some people worship this book and read it once a year every year my friend alex however said it's her least favorite book of all time <laughs> so real mixed reviews going off on this one so that's all for today i think tomorrow i have no idea <laughs> i don't know why i even bothered to try and tell you about tomorrow thank you very much for hanging out with me today it's been really nice to catch up with you. I am going to go and de-make up and pyjama myself now. So I hope things are good with you. I hope you're feeling good. I hope tomorrow is a better day if you haven't had a good one today. And as one last little reminder, don't forget all the details that you need to know about Fi and the discount that I've got for you are going to be in the description box down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It seriously means the world. Um, I hope all is good. And I will see you very soon with another video.